Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. As we come to you this morning, giving God thanks and praise, honor, and glory for his goodness and for his grace, certainly we want to begin our worship experience this morning in prayer with an invocation. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we invite your presence, Lord, into this place. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Lord God, bless today. But people are, are needing, Lord, a blessing. And Father, I know you have one in store. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, listen, nothing better to get the, the service started off well this morning than a hymn. I believe in a good hymn. Amen. And that hymn this morning is Down at the Cross, or to others it may be called Glory to His Name. Won't you join us as we sing together? Amen. Joining with the Alfred Street Baptist Church Choir. That lets you know, amen, that we're not prejudiced, we're not biased, Lord. Amen. We celebrate, amen, as interdenominational when we join together, amen. Amen in this worship experience. So join the Alfred Street Baptist Church Choir and the words will be right there so that you can sing along as well. All right. Amen. And then when we come back, we will be reading our scripture, our Old Testament and New Testament scripture. Amen. God bless you.
name of the Lord. All right. Wasn't that a powerful song? Knowing that, hey, when we begin to give God glory and we begin to praise him, my, 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 what things can happen. I heard someone say when praises go up, blessings come down. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading is found in the 16th division of Psalm. That is Psalm 116. Amen. Psalm 116. And we're going to begin reading and we're reading uh, this morning from, if you will, the international uh, version. All right. Psalm 16. And it reads in this fashion. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out my lib libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoice. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Amen. Amen. Now our New Testament scripture is found in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Again, that is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1, I'm sorry, verses 3 through 9. And it reads in this fashion. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercies, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Well, this morning as we prepare to go to God in prayer, Amen. We thank God for his mighty move of his hand upon, amen, the people. We have had so many at John Wesley who have suffered uh, ailment as a result of the COVID-19. Uh, many of you may not have even known, but on April the 4th, my wife and I had uh, gone to the fairgrounds here in Detroit and uh, had taken the test. And lo and behold, on the next following Tuesday afternoon, we received a call from the health department that indicated to us that both of us have the COVID-19 virus. Well, listen, saints of God, 
uh, the word of God lets us know he reigns on the just and the unjust. And all we're simply saying to you is, listen, we have not given up, nor will we give up. And I want you to know, amen, God is strengthening us day by day. The word of God said, as thy days are, so shall your strength be. So we're believing God for our healing, and we're hopeful that you are believing God for your healing as well. We thank God for how he's done a mighty move in bringing home many of our members from the hospital. Minister Alinda Miller is now home from the hospital. Amen. Sister Linnea Beal is home from the hospital. And uh, Sister Deborah Gatewood, all of these are home from the hospital and we're glad about it. Amen. So many others have, uh, have improved in their health. Brother Leon Lucas, amen, is home. And so we're to, to God be the glory of what he is doing. Well, let's go to God. God in prayer this morning, lifting up, amen, the sick and the shut-in, those who are in sorrow and grief as a result of the loss of loved ones, whether by this virus or uh, by other means. We want to lift up them in prayer, amen? So let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come into your presence, Lord God, this morning. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you honor and glory for it all belongs to you. Father, we come this morning, Lord God, first and foremost, acknowledging that, Father, we have sinned and we have fallen short of your glory. We have done things, Lord God, that was evil in your sight. Oh God, we are sorry, and I mean, Lord God, sincerely sorry for what we have done by thought, word, or deed. God, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask, oh God, that you would put our feet on the street called straight, oh God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, purify our thoughts our hearts, our minds, our lips, oh God, so that, Father, as we pray this morning, we know that, Lord God, this prayer is being received. God, this morning we come to you, Lord, thanking you for another Sunday, thanking you, Father God, for another Sabbath, a day, Lord God, that we have never seen, nor shall we ever see again. Father, we're thankful that you woke us up this morning, Lord God, in our right mind, God. We're so grateful this morning that, Lord God, you touched us throughout this week and kept us, Lord God, in the hollow of your hand. Father, many of us didn't know what condition we would be in, Lord God, when we were on the air last Sunday. Many of us didn't know how we were going to turn out, but look at us, God. We're thankful this morning, Father, for what you are doing in the lives of your people. And then, God, we pray this morning for those that remain in the hospital, those that are in the ICU rooms, those that are connected to ventilators, God, those, Father, who are battling, Lord God, this virus, Father, those who are, Lord God, suffering as a result of stroke or heart attacks, those, Lord God, who are uh, dealing with high blood pressure, those who are dealing with cancer, and Father, those who are dealing with diabetes. Lord, whatever the condition is, it does not matter because the word tells us that by your stripes we are healed. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord, that we can stand on this morning. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, for those who are on the battlefield, those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the medical profession, those, God, who are uh, providing services, Lord God, whether in the grocery store or what have you. Father, we're asking for protection all around them, Heavenly Father. We're asking you that you will touch them from the crown of their head to the very soles of their feet. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that thou would move upon them, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Jesus that nothing, O oh God, will stand in the midst and uphold itself against your power, against your anointing, against your healing. Father, I pray for protection upon each one, Lord. I ask you, Lord God, to bless, Father. And then, God, I ask you to take the services, Lord God, that are being shared all across Across the nation, Father, by way of uh, Facebook or by way of Twitter or however it is being shared. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, let your word go forth. Let, Lord, the spirit loose upon, Lord God, the airways so that, Father, somebody might be saved. Somebody might come crying, oh, I've been delivered. Somebody might be able to declare I've been healed. 
Father, all these things we ask of you. Hey, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I'm letting y'all know I done got excited already, amen. It doesn't take much for me to get excited. And so when I get excited, amen, I just have to watch myself because it starts me to cough. And so when you hear me cough, you know I got excited. I, I always tell the people at John Wesley, I said, hey, uh, when I look at you all and y'all backing up like that, I know I done got loud, amen. And because I got loud, I done got happy, amen, amen. Well, but listen, we've got a song for you this morning that we believe is going to minister to your heart. Amen. And that song just simply says, amen. When you look at the situation in your life, it just seems like everything is falling apart. You go one step and you end up two steps backwards. It seems like everything that is uh, that the enemy has is coming against you. But listen, ah, there is a song, a song by Hezekiah Walker that says, it's got to get better. Amen. And so this morning, I want you to hear that song and listen, listen to the words that they are going to get better. Why? Because God is in control. God bless you. And we'll be right back with the word of God. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. It's got to get better. All over the world, listen to these words. People come. People go. Your life has been out of control. You're confused. But don't worry. It's got to get better.
Amen. Wasn't that a powerful selection? Wasn't that a powerful word? Amen. In song. Didn't it just put you up on your feet and cause you, amen, to want to shout and tell somebody, amen, things are going to get better? Well, that's what we believe and that's what we're declaring on today. Well, this morning we got a word for you, amen. That's what Jeremiah said when they had him down there in that pit. Uh, they hollered down there and asked him, is there a word from the Lord? Jeremiah hollered back up, yes, there's a word from God. Well, I want to tell you this morning, in the midst of whatever you're dealing with, in the situations that are going on in life, amen, I want you to know God has a word for you. Out of Luke, Luke chapter 8. Verse 25. Again, that is Luke chapter 8. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And beginning at uh, verse 25. And it reads, And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. For the few moments that I have this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject entitled, Quiet Faith in Troubling Waters. Quiet Faith in Troubling Waters. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that you have imparted in us. Now, God, it's time to break the bread of life and, Lord, to distribute it to your people. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will find themselves saying, feed me, feed me. Oh, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, it tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the crucial element that is needed by every Christian to receive the full blessings of salvation. Now, there are many who, in times of plenty, pay lip service to faith and are quick to attest to the strength of their faith. But in times of want, their faith seemed to disappear. They lose it somewhere. The late Reverend Adam Clayton Powell was known for his flashy lifestyle and his aggressive drives to help blacks in America. One of his lasting contributions to civil rights was the implementation of the Powell Amendment which even today requires that states that discriminate by reason of sex or race cannot receive federal funds. But Powell was often embroiled in controversy, sex scandals, and other problems. As each arose, he go back to Harlem and stand on top of a car and say simply, keep the faith, baby. He always kept his cool, somehow, no matter how turbulent the storm. In the Christian community, the faith keepers are those who believe and trust God totally to eventually bring an end to their benefit out of any situation. Our text this morning first considers how Jesus gave his disciples a lesson in faith. On a certain day, he and his disciples boarded a ship to go to the other side of the lake, and Jesus fell asleep. Now during his sleep, a storm broke out and frightened his disciples to the point that they woke him and said, we perish. In Mark chapter 4, verse 38, it expands on that statement, for it reads this fashion, carest thou not that we perish? You see, the nature of these two accounts best represents two ways of responding to the circumstances. There are those who question the care and concern of God. They ask, carest thou not, Lord, that we perish? They look around America and see families are heartbroken over the loss of family members resulting from COVID-19. The impact 
on the people of color are disproportionate to those of their white counterparts. They ponder why does God not intercede and stop this merciless death of the innocent and helpless. People are losing their jobs, their homes, and their dignity. Their plea is similar to that of the disciples. Carest thou not that we perish? You see, their plea suggests that God has turned a deaf ear to their cries and that he has shunned their plight by falling asleep in their time of need. At least one of the disciples carried this view or Mark would have never recorded it. At least one of those who walked with the master considered the threat of the wind and the waves and felt that he had betrayed them by sleeping in the time of their peril. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, there are some today who feel that God has failed to act in the present as he has in the past. These are they who accept the fact that our history is saturated with the evidence of God's hand of deliverance. They acknowledge the rumbling voice of God speaking through ancient times of Israel and their deliverance, but they see no use for him today. They acknowledge the mighty hand of God in the great civil strive of this nation, trampling out his vintage <coughs> where the grapes of wrath are stored. But they see no use for him today. They acknowledge the undeniable presence of God in the brilliant and charismatic leaders of W.E.B. Du Bois, of A. Philip Randolph and Martin Luther King Jr., but they see no use for him today. Now, as we feel the frightening chill of an ill wind blowing and seeing the resurgence of racism, the rebirth of the Klan and hate groups in our nation, the same people who witnessed the handiwork of God in times past see no use for him today. Oh, brothers and sisters, how sad that is. However, the majority of the disciples on the boat were not the doubters that Mark suggests. The other gospel's account simply says they went to the master and said, Master, we perish. Huh? They did not bother to go into a lengthy description of the circumstance. They simply said, we perish. Well, listen, every child of God knows that when the storms of life are raging, we don't need a lot of fancy words. All we need to simply say, Lord, we perish. In my personal life, there has been some storms raging. Lord, I'm perishing. And I simply say, save me. I don't have time, amen, to get down with a long, lengthy prayer talking, amen, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. I'm like Peter when Peter said, Lord, I'm drowning, save me. In my family, the ill winds of discord are blowing strong. Lord, we're perishing. In my neighborhood, trouble is on every hand. The winds of crime are raging. We don't even feel safe, even in our own homes. Lord, we're perishing. We know you can do it because you've done it in many times past. Lord, save us from a watery grave. <coughs> Secondly, brothers and sisters, our text reminds us that when the wind blows, the hardest, our faith should be its strongest. When the storm broke out, Jesus was asleep below the deck, sleeping through the storm rage. Ah, uh, saints, can't you see him curled up somewhere? Amen. All comfortable. Amen. Head tilted back just Amen. Enjoying the waves. Y'all know how it was when you had, amen, water beds. But Jesus was just enjoying his sleep. He displayed in precept and example what it means to have, amen, quiet faith on stormy days. Some people who have noisy faith, that is close to what Shakespeare called being full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing. Peter at one time had noisy faith. 
He loudly pledged that he would spit, that he would stand by the Lord. But when the storms of persecution began to develop, he denied him three times. Ananias and Sapphira had a noisy faith. They loudly pledged to support the Lord's program, but when it came time to give all that they had, they backed out on their promises. Well, y'all know about the publican had a noisy faith that sounded good to the ears. He stood in the synagogue and prayed long prayers, loud prayers, but he received his reward in the praise of men. But Jesus, on the other hand, displayed the basic of quiet faith. This was the same faith that Abraham displayed as he led his son up the mountain of sacrifice. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, why the Lord has given me this responsibility, but I believe he provides an answer by and by, huh? This was the same faith that a widow woman showed one day when she took her last cup of meal and last crew of oil and gave bread to a stranger at her table. Jesus rose from his sleep and asked the question, where is your faith? <laughs> uh, they asked him a question, Lord, we perish, or carest not that we perish? Isn't it something when Jesus throws a question back at you and asks you, where is your faith? Well, Jesus showed a quiet faith on a stormy day. You see, quiet faith shows a confidence in God. Quiet faith shows a reliance on the divine will. You see, quiet faith this morning displays a dependence on the power of God. Quiet faith trusts completely in the word of the Lord. Jesus got up and rebuked the wind, simply saying, peace, be still. Today, he speaks to our personal circumstances, trouble in our home, peace, be still. Ill winds sweeping across our paths, peace, be still. Ah, finding it hard to hold on and trust God, peace, be still. Is the noise of the enemy constantly in your ear? Your God won't help you? Be still, saints of God. I like the old song that James Cleveland song when he said, ah, listen, ah, the storm tossed waves. Ah, but all he said was peace, be still. Saints of God, let me tell you something. Your world may be caving in. It may be causing you, amen, to get dizzy because of what's going on in your life. But can I tell you this morning, the power is in your tongue. All you've got to learn how to do is say, peace, be still. Hallelujah. Isn't that a powerful word today? Simply saying, it's not how noisy and how loud, amen, you try to make your faith. It's that quiet faith. That faith that doesn't have to say a lot. But oh, trust God and believe God and see the power of God move. Amen. Amen. I used to, uh, when I was in school, in parochial school, Sister Mary Helen would simply say, Empty barrels make the most noise. Listen, folk who sitting up here talking all loud, talking about, ah, I'll stamp on the devil's head. Listen, it ain't all about that. Quiet faith. Moving, amen, in quiet faith is what God is doing in the lives of his people. You ain't got to make a lot of noise. You ain't got to tell everybody. Just simply move in quiet Listen, this morning, there may be somebody here that, or out there, that may feel that 
amen, things were just troubling them. And, and amen, the, the more they tried, the harder it got. The more they tried to turn it over to God, the more trouble, amen, came their way. But let me say to you this morning, listen, God hears your prayer. God hears you. God sees your circumstances. Don't ever think that you're in this thing by yourself. This is what has been going on throughout this COVID-19. You've noticed on uh, the airways, they're talking about we're in this together. Well, let me tell you something. I can tell you one who you can count on, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in it with you. Amen. He doesn't, amen, look and stand on the shoreline, but he's in the storm with you saying, peace, be still. So if you want to give your life to Christ this morning, listen, simply join me in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But, oh God, because of your word, I'm wanting to hold on. I'm wanting to hold out, oh God. I'm wanting to see you, Lord God, take this life of mine, this wretched life of mine, oh God, and make it into something beautiful. God, I ask you right now, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the death, burial, and resurrection. And on this day, I receive him into my life. This day, God, I'm asking your son to come in to rule and to reign in my life this day in Jesus name. Well, listen, if you've prayed that prayer, listen, amen. You have received Christ in your life. Oh, I hear you saying this morning, but pastor, I don't feel saved. It ain't about a feeling. Listen, no, there's a lot of time, amen, as saints of God, we don't feel. But let me tell you something. We're not moved by what we feel because faith ain't about a feeling, y'all. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Well, listen, brother, sister, let me tell you something. You're saved. Now, you got to walk in your salvation. You hear what I'm saying? You got to walk in it. You got to begin to declare it. Now, that doesn't mean you're never going to make a mistake. That doesn't mean that, amen, you're never going to fall down that you're never going to make boo-boos in your life. But one thing I can say to you this morning, if you're willing to get up wherever you fall, get back up, get back in the race and ask God, forgive you for the mistake you made. And I tell you what, he won't make you start back all over again, but he'll start you right where you fell and keep you on your way. All right, listen, let me tell you something. You need to get into a church. You need to get into a place where the word of God is being taught and preached preached, amen, where the people of God can encourage you. And saints, let me tell you something, all over, amen, the metropolitan area of Detroit or wherever, amen, you live and are watching this, there's a church somewhere, there's a pastor somewhere that, amen, will take and receive you and teach you and disciple you so that you can become, amen, a strong man or a strong woman of faith, amen. And so we want you to connect Amen with the church. Don't delay. Don't say, well, you know, when this thing gets over with, I'm going to go to church. No, connect now. Make a decision now to connect with a church, with a family. Amen. Listen, John Wesley would be glad to have you as, amen, one of our family members. Amen. We're out here on, in Southfield, 28001 Evergreen Road in Southfield, Michigan. We would be glad and honored to have you as, amen, one of our family members. And so this morning, listen, all you need to do is contact us. Call the church. Our church number is 248-358-9307. Call. Let us know that you accepted Christ in your heart. Call. Let us know, amen, that you deserve desire prayer. Just call and let us know, amen, that you had a testimony that God delivered you, that God healed you, that God saved you. Will you do that? Amen. Call today and let us know so that we can be, amen, rejoicing with you, all right, and pray with you. Well, listen, it's about time for us to go, but before we go, listen, I got to say something, and I know, amen, the, my church family uh, know that since we have not been together, we have not been able to share <clears throat> those who are celebrating birthdays and or anniversaries. Well, 
I can't go back all the way to March, but I can go here in April and celebrate, amen, those who have celebrated birthday, Christopher and Kelly Williams' anniversary was on April 3rd. We wish them a happy anniversary. Aaron Harris' birthday took place on Sunday, April the 5th. Deborah Gatewood celebrated her birthday on April the 6th. Curtis Tillman on April April the 9th, Aisha Jones and Mamie Washington celebrated their birthday on the 11th. Hey, and then on Easter, Alante Blanchard celebrated their birthday. Madison Moses on the 13th and Rovetta King celebrated their birthdays. And then Mother Lainey Crutcher celebrated her birthday on this past Thursday, the 16th. Linda Carter, Eric Myrick, Amen. Celebrate their birthdays. Uh, celebrated their birthday on this past Friday. And then Michael and Stephanie Knox celebrated their anniversary. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And guess what? On today, the 19th, Cheryl Woodson celebrates her birthday. And she's not alone. My niece, Jacqueline Abibi, celebrates her birthday. We wish you a happy birthday. And then on tomorrow, the 20th, Frank Jackson the third celebrates his birthday. Allie and Rhonda Burroughs will be celebrating their anniversary. And yours truly, hey, will be celebrating our birthday on April the 22nd, y'all. I ain't ashamed. Somebody say, yeah, you're getting older. But I said, I may be getting older, but I thank God I don't look older. Hello, somebody. And then on the 23rd, Lynn Wood and Reverend Yvette Lowes will be celebrating their anniversary. And my sister, Deborah Amen. Hamilton Young will be celebrating her birthday as well. We wish all of them a happy birthday. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Uh, I can't forget you, Knowledge. Knowledge Williams will be celebrating his birthday on the 25th. God bless you. Amen. And then we say to you as we close, don't forget if this ministry has been a blessing to you, won't you support us by means of Cash App, Givelify, Zelle, however means, amen. We do have a lockbox. Uh, there at the church, 28,001 Evergreen. Hey, listen, you can drop off your offering right there. But won't you support us and help us to stay, amen, uh, in the ministry and to support and to do the work of God that he has called us to do. Hey, until then, amen. We'll see you next week, same time, amen. Perhaps the same station, don't know. But we thank God for you. And if you notice, we're not at the church Amen. We're here in our home. Amen. And right behind me is a picture of my mother. And uh, we're just so glad to be here in our home. And of course, uh, when you got this COVID-19, <laughs> you don't nobody want to be around you anyway. All right. So we thank God for allowing us to come into your homes or wherever. Amen. This is being broadcast. Let's receive the benediction. Oh God, now as we prepare to close, we ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit Guide us and direct us through this week. Help us, O oh God, to trust you and to have that quiet like faith in the midst of these storms. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before his holy throne, to the only wise God our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power henceforth now and forevermore. Amen.